Okay, please call the meeting to order. It's seven o'clock. I'll read the Open uh, Public Meeting Act. Uh, this meeting is being held in conformity to the Open Public Meeting Act. Proper public notice of this meeting was published in local newspapers on March 15, 2014 and March 16, 2014. If any board member or member of the public in attendance believe that this meeting is in violation of the Open Public Meeting Act, the Hoboken Board of Education requests that they make a statement at this time. The board wishes to make those in attendance aware that this meeting is being recorded on video and will be broadcast by the board at a later date on cable TV channel 77 and Fios channel 46. The Hoboken Board of Education is committed to preserving the decorum of the public process and is mindful that we live in an age of electronic computers, cell phones, and other communication devices. Nevertheless, we respectfully request that all meeting participants kindly silence their electronic devices during the course of this meeting, and if use of the device is necessary, we ask that you please leave the meeting room if you need to conduct personal business. Thank you. Please rise for the salute to flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please take the roll. Mr. Biancamano. Present. Ms. Evans. Here. Mr. Kalufo. Here. Uh, Ms. Mitchell. Here. Ms. Stromwell. Here. Mr. Mr. Gold. Dr. Gold. Here. Ms. McAllister. Welcome. Here. <laughs> Sorry, there's a intense basketball game. And Ms. Sobola. Here. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dr. Kobach. Okay. So, board members, this evening, we are asking you to adopt a preliminary budget. What does that mean? It means at this point, the administration has worked diligently for the past few months to work on develop a budget for the upcoming school year based on all the information that we have available. And at this point, we pass the baton on to you. And you have a period of time until May to make modifications, to work on the budget, to um, make suggestions, to work together to further refine our budget. So every budget is an approximation. It's an estimate. It is not an exact science. It is, those numbers are not exact. And over the next few weeks, we will continue to work to have more refined numbers. Although the parameters for the budget are what are really being established for tonight, where the budget can go and the, um, the different line items that we're going to be using in our, in our upcoming budget. So this year, the board has a very difficult task. The administration has been working diligently, as I said, to uh, prepare a budget that meets the needs of students, but at the same time balances the needs of students and staff with the concerns of taxpayers. The ongoing effort to push costs for public education away from the state and federal government to the local level continues to the detriment of our school system. Combined with a number of ongoing issues, we're left with a very difficult budget situation. The original version of the budget, right from the beginning when we found out our state aid, showed there was a significant gap between our revenue and our anticipated expenditures, and we made a round of initial reductions. The causes of the budget gap are the result of a number of forces coming together to create a perfect storm that will likely deepen and continue for the next few years. There are six reasons that make it reasonable on our part to believe that the difficult budget situation we have this year will continue for at least the next three to five years. The first issue that is addressed in the budget, something that has to be addressed, something that the auditor has advised the board and the county department of education has advised the board must be addressed is the budget, um, the food service deficit. So the food service deficit is something that uh, for a variety of reasons, we've accumulated a significant deficit. This year, we need to contribute at least $200,000. That is the bare minimum. And so that is a $200,000 expense that does not go to the classroom. The other thing that the board has to consider is the practice of budgeting unreserved fund balance. Currently, the board uses about $1.6 million 
an unreserved fund balance every year. And what that means is basically that we take our surplus and we give it back to the taxpayers. So a very nice thing. It raises our budget. Ultimately, our budget is always $1.6 million less. The problem is, under the conditions that we have, we cannot continue this practice. We will not have the money to do it. And whenever you develop a budget and you have this particular situation where you have to anticipate a surplus, it's reasonable to think we will not be able to generate the type of surplus we've been able to over the past few years. So it's not anyone's fault. It's something that the board has done for a number of years. And so giving money back to the taxpayers is, is, is a very nice thing to do. But it's something that will be more difficult to do by using surplus. So what that means is that is a form of revenue. It's a form of revenue because it's budgeted, surplus is budgeted into the budget for the following year. It's a form of revenue that we no longer have at the level we once had it. The other, um, the third reason is that the OLA expansion was approved. And as a result, the pattern we have of increasing the charter allocation by about $750,000 to $800,000 a year for the past many years will continue and the charter school increase alone eats up the 2% cap, leaving nothing within the cap for the traditional public schools. The other issue is the issue of school choice. So a form of revenue that the district enjoyed this year, our school choice revenue is a great aid to the district. It's $2.8 million. It's being reduced to the $2.5 million range. So we're losing about $250,000 in revenue for school choice. So school choice is a program that became very popular but it was something that the state allowed to expand, didn't have the money for, and has to curtail. So we can expect that to happen again next year and the following year. The school choice aid that we enjoyed will not be at the level that it was. On the other side is the idea that if we had not expanded our school choice options, we wouldn't have this form of revenue. So it's still a great benefit to the district. It's still a, quite a bit of revenue that comes into the district with minimal true cost to the Board of Ed. The federal government continues to reduce spending, and as a result, we've been notified by the Department of Ed that we must anticipate a 15% reduction in federal revenue. So this is guidance from the Department of Ed. Federal reductions are likely to continue. The state increase, the state aid increase that we had this year is a little under $50,000. So state aid, in this case, is a token gesture to address some unfunded mandates, one of them being park readiness. So the district is receiving $10 a student to prepare for a park test that requires a significant investment in technology, maybe some software, some other things that we need. And so we continue to be thankful for the gift of over $800,000 from the United Arab Emirates for, uh, through a grant program with the Hurricane Sandy Relief Fund. So again, it, it is very reasonable to anticipate that state aid will not increase, will remain flat, because revenues for the state, projections for revenue, as you read in the paper, consistently fall short of expectations. So it is very unlikely the state will be able to increase its revenue. Therefore, our revenue will not increase. So when you add it together, our, our revenue streams, school choice aid, our tuition. So our tuition situation is another form of revenue that is decreased to the tune of about $310,000 with other miscellaneous revenue we're anticipating. One of the big losses is in the area of tuition, and the reason why is because we have fewer seats available to bring in students. So in particular, our ABA program is a very popular program. It's a program that is populated mostly by children from Hoboken. So we have fewer children. We had three children this year from other districts in the program. Next year, we will have one. We could try to build this back up or try to have some other students move in, except for that the program is already populated largely by our own students. So we really don't have much room. So we are um, we are enjoying the success of the program, but that doesn't help with tuition because we don't have room to bring many students in. Um, the issue of fund balance, again, another form of revenue, a reduction of almost 400,000. Federal aid, we reduced. So our total decrease in revenue is about 1.1 million. So the other, the other important part is our revenue increases. So at this point, the budget that we have proposed includes a 3.9% tax levy increase. And so that adds up to about 1.4 million. We have decreases, but there's still a difference of about $400,000. So on the surface, it appears, well, our revenue actually, as a sum, increased by about $400,000. Now, it's not taken into consideration early childhood aid or other aid that we have. The early childhood program enjoys a 2.77% increase. So there's a, there's a nice increase for the early childhood program. It's the K-12 part of the budget that is our, our major problem, okay? so. Here's our major cost drivers. 
Okay, first of all, we have the, the charge school allocation, as I mentioned, that is 773,000. We have our food service deficit, as mentioned, that's 200,000. We had anticipated in our original budget expending about $400,000 for new textbooks throughout the district. We still have some more textbooks that we need to purchase. We have special education increases expected to be about $400,000 originally. Our flood insurance, we originally decided that um, we would try to include flood insurance in our budget at the amount of $200,000. Um, we typically, for the past few years, we've invested in our facilities in the amount of about $750,000. Technology, $100,000. And also, we've increased enrollment at the lower grades. So we anticipate hiring three teachers in the amount of about $200,000. So our major cost drivers are about $3 million that was in the original budget. However, after, the, after our original budget and seeing our revenue situation, we reduced those cost drivers in different ways by about $1,100,000. Does that mean that we are not going to purchase textbooks? No. What it means is that we're gonna go ahead with a textbook purchase, but under the circumstances, we're going, we're going to recommend a lease purchase. With technology, computers, there's a, there's a need for new computers for the teachers here at the Wallace School. The computers here are very old, most of them. And so as a result, we wanted to spend about $100,000 on computers. We're gonna spend $50,000, but lease purchase. So same thing. Um, we reduced our anticipated expenses in special education. We cut our facilities budget in about half. So we, we're not going to do as much as we've been able to do for the past few years. And um, all the other costs are fixed. There's not much we could do with those. So that comes to the difficult part. So we've made the changes that we can possibly make in our major cost drivers. We've looked at all of our other accounts. We've worked with the principals. We've gone through an entire extensive process with scheduling. We've looked at just about everything that we can possibly look at in preparation for the budget. Any other reductions? Because there is still a significant amount of reductions that need to be made to meet our revenue. Any amount of reductions have to come from salaries and benefits. That's the only way to make up this difference. This equates to a significant reduction in force. Every effort will be made to protect the teaching and learning process, and this includes efforts to maintain good class sizes and to maintain all the supports and services that are necessary for the students. We initially budgeted over a million dollars additional in the budget to allow for increases in salaries and benefits. The net result, based on a revenue picture, is not only do we not budget that million dollars, but we took away another million dollars, meaning that there is an impact on staffing of about $2 million. And so what does that translate into as far as the people who work in the district? Um, when you add it together, there is a variety of recommendations that we will have for a host of different efforts. There's reductions in force. There are, so people will be laid off. There are other situations we have as far as um, non-renewal for um, part-time people. There's a whole host of different efforts. There's a privatization effort. There's a lot of different things that the district will have to do. A lot of different places will have to go to make up that $2 million. So the intent is to go ahead with making reductions in lots of different areas. So it's not just one area. There's a lot of different ways that we have to make reductions. There will be administrative reductions. There'll be line item reductions. There'll be other reductions that we'll make. For example, we've already made a, a reduction in athletics. Discretionary spending, obviously, there'll be a new definition of need versus want. Um, we've reduc reduced athletics by about $50,000 already in the proposed budget. Um, in the event that we have small class sizes, we have been able to, over the past few years, particularly with the advanced placement classes, we've been able to, we've been trying to build the program. We're going to have to use the virtual high school at a greater length, a, to, more, to a greater extent than what we are now at the high school to allow students in small classes to still take those classes. Um, we're going to use grant funding to offset salaries whenever possible. So that's still, that has another effect because there might be some other things we can't do with the grant funding that we're doing now. Of course, we remain thankful for that $800,000 grant from the UAE. And we're also gonna make, like I said, the miscellaneous line item reductions as we see fit over the next few weeks to make sure that our budget is exactly where it needs to be in the final version that we'll be working together on. And the submission for the final budget has to take place by May 6th. So we actually have a few, we have more than a month to, to work on a, on a finished version of the budget. But that is an overview of the basics of the budget. 
And what I'd like to do is turn things over to Mr. Moffitt so he can go through some of the details of the budget. And then the other question I have is um, on here, we're accurate about the bank cap amount? Yes. That's accurate? That is okay. accurate. Mr. Moffitt? Yep. Um, what, what I have tonight is uh, I'm going to work off of this summary. You have a detail behind it. Um, you have a revenue section that supports it. You'll have fund um, 11, which is our general fund, uh, fund 10, and then fund 15, which is our school-based budget. That's all attached to that document. Um, and I'll also be reading uh, and going over the slides that will basically correspond as we work down the right side from top to bottom. Uh, yeah, top to bottom. Um, a lot of this, uh, I'll start off with process in the business office. It's pretty much an extension of the conversation we had in January. Uh, when we went over the budget plan. So for those that weren't here, I'll go over it shortly. Uh, the process basically, uh, we sit and review the district. I'm sorry? No. Oh. Can you close the door, please? Part of the process, it's an ongoing process. It starts really in July and continues in September. We review the salaries. We've done that. We've met with the principals and other budget managers within the district to review not only their unit goals, but also their current spending uh, patterns. We've uh, taken all that information, entered it into our financial system in a module, which then helps us create a final district-wide budget. Uh, we rev really reviewed line by line the spending trends on the various lines to make sure it was uh, appropriate. We even had uh, our auditors look at those spending patterns to confirm our overall spending. Part of that review also will anticipate uh, the future, which is 1415's use of surplus. So we look at that information, and then what we do is as we build it, we get feedback from the board, and uh, uh, at that point fit it into a budget on the DOE software that has to balance. So that's really where we are tonight, where the balanced budget, uh, where uh, it is a preliminary budget as uh, the superintendent had suggested. Uh, it is a, in a state of flux, and we do have uh, the ability to change it, not only uh, our own initiated uh, changes, but uh, any that arise from a review of the county office. But uh, if I can go through, the uh, again, the, the summary and work down, uh, you'll have two columns comparing last year this year. Um, you'll see that the general fund tax levy, which is our property tax, uh, is 3.9% increase. Uh, that basically comprises of uh, the 2% cap plus uh, adjustments for enrollment and health care. Uh, the fund balance is uh, right below that, and that is uh, a reduction of about $378,000. Um, that uh, is the drop off that was um, in, we anticipate in this year's budget, which is the carryover into the future budget. That's uh, as the superintendent had suggested, that is money that goes back to the taxpayer. If not, you would have a, a, a difference in revenue, and you would have to pass that on normally in the proper tax. But uh, again, that is a $1.3 million use of surplus. Um, the second area, uh, the $300,000 decrease, it's uh, a, really a 35.25% uh, decrease in overall revenue from local sources. Uh, as discussed already, the main reason for that uh, happens to be a drop off in uh, the tuition we receive uh, for students in our district from other uh, districts for, in this case, our special ed programs. Um, state aid, um, you'll see it's uh, a minimal increase um, due to the reduction of uh, some school choice aid uh, formula. Uh, that basically was reduced about $255,000, and then there was a slight increase in the uh, park and uh, the spending growth limit per pupil limit for another uh, 25,000. So that nets to a positive about $50,000 increase, which is relatively min minuscule and is considered to be a flat funding scenario. Um, working down, uh, so that local revenue sources, uh, the uh, increased uh, like, uh, roughly about 800,000, about 2%, but that's all in any, any revenue that is part of the local. So you're talking tax levy, you're talking state aid, um, you're, uh, you're going to be talking um, uh, miscellaneous revenue, rents, um, interest, those type things. So uh, the state aid is there uh, right below that. That is a less than 5% increase, as we spoke about. And then federal aid uh, is a reduction of about 40%. Unfortunately, uh, that also includes uh, federal uh, two, two programs, SEMI, which is uh, based upon our uh, reimbursements for special education costs to the district 
as well as impact aid. So that's the reduction area for 120, uh, which is the 40% decrease, which brings us uh, to a number. And uh, the general fund is our operating budget, and it's offset by our general fund revenue. So you'll see the $52 million number there, which increased by 1.39%. Uh, and that's really our main operating budget and revenue source. Uh, beyond that, you have, uh, moving down the, the page, you have our preschool uh, program aid, we'll call it. You have a state and a local contribution, so that's the $10.5 million number, uh, which is the 2.77% increase from year to year. You uh, also have non-public program aid, which is down a little bit. There's a little reduction there, but this, uh, this classification of aid is what I call the pass-through, and that pass-through uh, is for uh, private schools, and they receive textbook, um, uh, special education, they call it 192, 193, uh, and nursing service type aid uh, that they can receive, but it just, it just simply just flows through our books, uh, and although we have the administrative task of monitoring it, uh, but it does go out to private schools. Um, and then you have federal aid, which is a restricted aid, um, and this re really, uh, the majority of that would be NCLB, Title I, II, III, uh, as well as IDEA, which is special ed aid from the federal government. Uh, as alluded to earlier, we have restrictions from the, the county office, uh, State Department of Education, to budget about 85% of that, so that's uh, the cause of that decline. So uh, overall, the total revenue picture it, it is below a, a percent. It's actually 0.88, so maybe a 0.9, uh, which is a very uh, small increase from year to year. Um, Okay, we'll move down through appropriations. Uh, but before we get there, what I'd like to do is uh, talk about enrollment, because that's a big part of the projection. It's not on the sheet. Uh, what I can tell you is that overall it's about 93 students, resident students. Uh, again, it was covered in the uh, January meeting. It's our kindergarten and early grades are really pushing the enrollment growth at this stage. So we are projecting about kindergarten enrollment of roughly 41 students increase. Uh, grades one through five, um, uh, 32 students, and then a small increase at the high school level. Now, uh, when we were in the uh, finance committee, the suggestion was to try to do some of the trend uh, pictures from the, uh, the, the prior January presentation. So you see enrollment, although black and white uh, kind of gets lost in there, but at least you see the last three years relatively clear. So it brings us uh, totally up to, uh, you know, resident students of 2,526 students. Um, now appropriations, uh, you have our current expenses, which includes our, our main operation. In, in this case, I wanted to uh, break out salaries separate. Um, we have uh, current expenses uh, are increasing about, about a little over 8%, well, close to 9%. But then below it, you have uh, the current salaries is, is basically what we were talking about earlier about a significant reduction in our overall staffing at the district. It is broad-based, and it's, uh, it really affects uh, most lines on our budget. So uh, as you analyze it uh, the next few months, uh, should weeks to the month, um, you'll see it's a broad base, and it'll hit basically every line in, in the budget. At least that's a salary line. Um, okay, so part of the push for the increase in uh, the current expenses uh, you'll see the residual, we do have a, a residual increase in the employment benefit area. That's about an 8% increase there. Uh, special education went up close to over 200, closer to $300,000. Again, these are costs that are associated with the tuition rates for out of district placement, as well as uh, professional services that arise out of uh, the IEP, which is an individual education program for the students. Uh, other pushes uh, on our uh, growth would be uh, communications, energy, the food service contribution that we spoke about earlier, we increased that contribution, uh, and technology. Legal costs uh, did, uh, did, did reduce. Again, we project less that, uh, than la uh, this year, and that's about $63,000 less, roughly. Again, the, again I, I'd like to say this, these are preliminary budget numbers, and they can change. Um, so, again, on page six, I have a, a payroll grid uh, that shows you an overall trend downward. Um, and then special education, I, I don't have the numbers, actually the numbers kind of come out. But you get the, it's about 24, it drops, it's, it drops from $24.5 million, again, just salaries that are uh, charged against our general fund. 
goes from 25.5 uh, down to 24.4. So that's a reduction of a million, a million one. Special education increased. Uh, I wanted to give you a slide there and show you the overall trend uh, for the past several years. Legal costs, uh, there's a, again, a look out from, uh, from uh, 2010 uh, up till today. Uh, this budget, 2014-15. Uh, uh, another drive uh, for our increase in general fund, again, a general fund or operating, uh, it includes in the budget software package that the department has, uh, we have a charter school and capital outlay, outlay portion. Uh, the charter schools, uh, again, went up 7.5 million dollars in 2013-14 to 8.2 uh, million this year, which is 14-15. And that increase of 773 thousand dollars, I can break it out for you because I've had some questions from board members. Uh, the Hoboken Dual Language Charter School represents about 575 thousand of that. Uh, Elysian Charter School is 184 thousand of that. Uh, Hoboken Charter School is 12,000, and then we have a few others that are small increments uh, that would uh, total uh, $773,000. Again, I gave you a corresponding uh, trend uh, bar graph. Uh, below charter school section here on that summary sheet, uh, you have capital outlay. Again, as the superintendent alluded to, we, this is an area that we had to reduce significantly to, get, again, get into uh, balance. The budget revenue has to balance appropriations. So uh, capital outlay is reduced by over $440,000, uh, moving from a million one to about $664,000. Um, so we had to take that down. So what did uh, end up in here right now, I could just go over a couple of the projects that are in capital outlay. Uh, we have a Windows project district-wide, so various uh, windows will be replaced. We have a kitchen upgrade at the high school, uh, Wallace upgrade at the, for the kitchen, a toilet renovation at the high school. You have some re related architect fees and contingencies for those various projects. You have a lease purchase uh, payment of about $200,000, and that's for that energy program that we put into place and we relamped the district. Uh, branch scaffolding, we still have that um, you know, structure uh, for the outside exterior. And then we have a couple of miscellaneous expenditures. So that, that is basically what is left in the capital outlay. Um, I wanted to at least highlight administrative costs because as we talked in, in some of these separate conversations, uh, we constantly hear about administrative fees and costs and, and whatnot. So the preliminary uh, numbers look like, uh, again, we're under, again, there was a trend last year, it was about 300, this year we're under by 600. Regional limit here is $2,035. We come in about 1435, so $600 less. Um, what's next at this point? Um, it is submitted. Uh, the preliminary budget uh, after approval tonight by the Board of Ed uh, it will be finalized and it will be given over uh, not only to you, but it will be under uh, a review of the county office, Department of Ed. Um, not only will you continue to del deliberate it as a whole, it will deliberate in finance uh, committee. Uh, once the Hudson County uh, office finishes uh, the review, they may come back to us and have us adjust. But once they give us final approval, we're able to go out and advertise if that information then can be shared publicly. Uh, it'll be placed on our, uh, our website. It will have a user-friendly budget. Uh, we'll have a Q&A as a question comes in. We can answer it. We'll prepare all the information for a public hearing. Um, that public hearing is, right, is targeted at the May, May 6, 2014. And uh, we'll have a discussion there and, and more details about the final uh, budget at that point. Uh, that concludes my report at this stage. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any board member questions? Uh, Mr. Chair, in terms of the meeting on May 6th, I know it says tentative. Um, when will we know if it's an official meeting and is it a 7 p.m. start in this room? Yes. It's an official meeting, 7 p.m. in this room. Okay. Thank you. Day of the week is May Tuesday. Tuesday. Any other questions? No? I do. I have one. I think if you look at numbers, they seem deceiving until you find out that there are people associated with it, and they have a salary reduction of $1,133,000. However, you have to look deeper into the budget to realize that is not the only budget item that's affecting employees of the um, school district. To the extent possible, Dr. Toback, can you in human terms 
tell us what the cost in terms of individual people that have families to support and have been a part of this community, what the impact will be on them. Okay, so I have to be very careful. I know. Because we have a staffing meeting and there's a lot of other information that will um, be discussed over the coming weeks. Um, so we looked at, okay, is, is the reduction of $2 million from our original budget in staffing, is, is that, like, how, how can we put all that together, okay? The, um, the total amount of, of people part-time, um, contracts per, per diem, different types of positions that we have in the district added up to about um, 54 people who would lose their employment. In addition to that, there are another dozen or so people that would lose, um, we talked about um, a reduction in hours and other positions. So there's a significant number of people that would be affected by this, although I hesitate to say any more. And for dramatic effect, I'll just repeat, 54 people, maybe, you know, no, nothing. About that. And about 12 people will have their hours, I guess the euphemism is adjusted. Under the preliminary budget. Under the preliminary, I mean, it's our, our choice. You have okay. a number of weeks to go. Before we vote on this, who's signed up for the public? Good evening. Good evening. Brian Murray, 701 Monroe Street. I just have two quick points about the, uh, the budget that's been proposed um, regarding specific numbers. Uh, just so that I'm clear about this, the increase of 3.9% is on the, the, the original number, roughly 38 million that would come out to 39.426 roughly a million and a half dollars increase in the budget. There's been um, quite a bit of discussion in, uh, in the public newspapers and in various um, forums such as this and about uh, the charter school expansion. And uh, on page seven of, the sli of your slide presentation, slide 14 of the appropriations, you're attributing the uh, expansion to roughly five, almost 600,000. So even if the, the expansion did not happen, um, it's not so much that there would be this giant increase in wave of teachers that would come in to uh, basically, for all that money that was being taken away, it essentially means that you know, this increase might only be 900,000 instead of a million five is what I look at it right now. Um, so I just want to understand, is that correct? There's a million five, and the other one was about 600,000. Is that, is that right? Uh, when you're done speaking. Okay. And then the second thing is that uh, in Mr. Toback's report, Dr. Toback's report, the, uh, this fund balance uh, line item, I'm still a little confused by it simply because um, I don't re recall receiving any kind of a check or a tax rebate for when my taxes were lowered because there was a fund balance. And, you know, if you could just explain that just a little bit better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Tobak? So the question about fund balance confuses just about everybody because it's a two-year um, process, even three years. So no, you did not receive a tax rebate, but your tax bill was reduced. And the reason why is because the board has taken surplus that it has and what it does is it says, okay, we're going to take our surplus from this year and we're going to use it in our budget for the following year. And the amount has been about 1.6 million. So in other words, $1.6 million is now additional revenue that is being used in the following year's budget. And so that is tax levy that, that does not have to be raised. So what goes from 1.6 million, which is what we've been able to do, is now reduced to in the one point, we've reduced that by about $300,000 so that we're able to make ends meet, still give back a sizable amount, not make a dramatic reduction, still give back 1.3 million to the taxpayers. So we've budgeted about 1.3 million into next year's budget. That will be revenue to offset increases next year, and then we'll have to continue to lower that number because we will have a very difficult time generating that revenue. So we have to, um, we have to consider not only this year's budget 
next year's budget and the following year's budget and what type of revenue we may have and what would that lead in terms of surplus. We have to always look out for a surplus for a few years down the road. Okay, now the expansion you're referring to for the Ola Charter School, yes, is about $575,000. Now, I, I didn't really catch what you were meaning by the other one. What did you mean by the other, the other number, the other, like what were you? The levy increases roughly a million and a half. Yes. The tax levy increased, correct? Yes. So, but you have to understand within that. Um, so, okay, there's the charter school allocation as a whole, which is nearly $800,000. There is $300,000, which is attributable to our, um, our effort to reduce, in other words, we have to, we have to cut for the tax levy, I'm sorry, the, the surplus, the surplus being budgeted for future revenue. We have the food service deficit. So if you add together 800,000 plus 300,000 plus 200,000, you have 1.3 million. That's money that is never seen by a student in the district. So you understand that the tax levy right away is almost completely eaten up by things that will not have any effect, will not help the students, will not do anything. So that's, that's unfortunately the situation that we're in. And um, we have other expenses. I mean, we'll talk oh, about this more, but the cost of charter schools will be going up and we have to anticipate it. Um, for two more to, years. For two more years. Mm -hmm. So uh, to say that this only took half a million dollars from us now, we have to anticipate what the uh, growth will be in the future. Yes. Is that okay? Um, one other thing I'd like to say before I call over, would you like to speak? Is there another speaker? Do you, you want to? No, do we have another speaker? Do, no. Let's do another one. Also, and this is my own editorializing, 25% of this city's budget goes to education. Please do some research and find out usually what percentage of other cities' budgets go to education. Because I think when you talk about percentages, it always talks about what the base is. So um, a 3.9% uh, increase for us is a lot less than a 3.9% increase for the county, let's say. So in terms of trying to put things in perspective, please look at the actual base by which we are paying for our school system. That is just my- Mr. Chair, may I ask yeah. a follow-up question yes. to- Mr. Moffat, I was wondering, uh, we spoke about this uh, a few nights ago when we sat down and went over uh, the budget. Um, in terms of banked cap, I'm just wondering if you can help that explain better to the public because as Mr. Murray said, there is a tax levy increase of 3.9%, but I believe 1.9% of that comes from banked cap, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? I was just wondering if you can... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please. Well, well, first of all, yeah, bank cap, is it, is it similar to the surplus? It ends up being a very complicated issue. Right. But due to uh, decisions made, made in the past to not utilize the spending authority or the taxing authority uh, in prior uh, boards, um, you get to bank the difference. And uh, we can use that as a district moving forward to adjust that tax levy up beyond the restrictions of the 2% with adjustments. So you could utilize that as a board to uh, increase past uh, the 3.9%, if so desired. Uh, the amount that remains in the bank is about $695,000. We used roughly, uh, again, in the, in the action tonight, about 177,000 of that to uh, move that tax levy up to 3.9 percent. Is, is that addressed? Yeah, it was so, more for the public sake. I'm and so the, the point is, if the board wanted to, we could even raise the taxes higher than that. That is correct. Okay. And, and the reason why we get to, again, just so the public understands bank cap, the reason why we get to use the bank cap is because the taxes were held flat for three years, when, two years ago or something like right, that, correct? I think that was some of the reasons, yes. Okay. Okay, can we call a vote? Yes. Which are, would it be a consent agenda or each item separate? Uh, we do a consent. Like okay. A consent. So having a consent agenda on the... Um... Right there. there are two actions, if I could just clarify. There's use of bank cap, as we just discussed, of 177,113. And then the uh, regular uh, resolution adopting not only the budget uh, at 64,850,611, uh, but that also contains a tax levy of 39,426,390. Okay, let's call the um, vote. 
Oh, I can. Who's going to make a motion? I'll motion. Second. Mr. Biancamano? Yes, on introduction. Ms. Evans? Yes. Mr. Cluffell? Yes. Uh, Ms. McAllister? Yes. Ms. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Sobolov? Yes. Ms. Stromwall? Yes. And Dr. Gold? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Is there any public that wants to speak? Good evening, Brian Murray, 701 Monroe Street. So what's broken here? Uh, you know, last year, 4% tax increase. This year, minimum 3.9% tax increase. Perhaps 54 jobs in jeopardy or more. Um, cost per pupil higher than going to Rutgers. Ninth most violent school district bottom ranked high school. And yet the, ta the dollars just keep going out the window. The dollars just keep going out the window. The facilities don't get any better. The education doesn't get any better. I mean, what's broken? That's, does anybody have any solutions? Next year we're gonna be here again and it's gonna be banked cap and 4% or 5% and more jobs lost because the, the costs keep out way, uh, running the revenues. I saw it last year. I projected it this year. Dr. Toback talked about it for the next three to five years. And yet, there's no solution that we're talking about for three to five years. You know, if, if I were an employee of this district, I might be concerned about my job next year and the year after and the year after. If I, as a parent, I'm concerned about the education next year and the year after and the class size next year and the year after. And yet, Again, there's no solution, there's, no, there's nothing here to say, hey, you know, the one thing that we didn't talk about with all of this budget is how do we work with the different providers, the different unions, not to just cut jobs, but to say how do we restructure the cost here so that it makes sense and that we get value out of it. Nothing has ever been discussed about that. All I come up here every meeting and on the agenda is see, well, that's, that was a union, a union negotiated number. $37 an hour, $39 an hour for essentially after school programs. You know, numbers that for the privatization, simply they don't equate. And I'm not blaming any one individual, but I'm saying that, you know, what we've come down to and what we've boiled down to in the last few months is really, as a cynic, I'm saying, gee, I wonder if Mr. Gold and Mr. Enrico engaged in, you know, racially divisive comments in the media simply to soften everybody up for these, these tax increases and the problems that are systematic that simply won't change without there being real discussion at the top on how to take charge of big level ideas. I mean, the, the constituency that you're actually serving are the people that are suffering. It's not this white flight. You know, the people behind me that are gonna come up and speak next and say, Brian Murray's crazy and you know, the schools are great. They're not, the, they're not the people that are suffering, like, they're not the ones that are getting the free lunch, are they? They're not the ones that, are, that you say are the ones that are suffering. The fact is the system is broken and you don't, know how to serve the, you don't know how to serve the students and the families that go here. Thank you. Any other speakers? Yes, I have two others. Uh, Mr. Yoon Hendricks and I have a Mr. Enrico who would like to speak. I'm going to keep my own five minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Jason Ewan Hendricks, Monroe Street. Uh, I regret that I just arrived, um, though uh, I think the comments I'll choose to share are based on uh, a lot of experience, a lot of time spent in the district, uh, and I if I understand the purpose of the meeting, it was a special meeting to talk about the budget, and there will be an additional board meeting where this all has to get approved, and there will be an opportunity to speak then as well, so I will be reviewing this stuff. Um, I didn't come prepared with anything uh, to discuss, but uh, uh, my fellow uh, 
resident, Mr. Murray, uh, uh, since he invited me by uh, referring to the folks behind him who were going to come up, uh, I thought I had to. Uh, I'll speak just about budget items. The, the other things mentioned, and I really hope that anybody else who chooses to speak tonight sticks to the budget items as well and doesn't go on to these other controversial topics that are opinions that are uh, uh, really frankly out of proportion with I think the reality in our district. Uh, but on the budget topic, I have to say that there, for anyone who chooses to look, to actually pay attention, there are plenty of things that within the range of controls that the board actually has. Uh, there are plenty of things that have been done uh, thanks to the administration to control costs. They are, the district is saddled with a long-term situation uh, related to uh, union commitments. Um, the district has to deal with laws and there are matters of insurance. There are constraints around facilities. There are all sorts of things that result in very little latitude, I believe. Uh, and the situation with the charter schools is one of those things, too. There are laws that govern how this district has to deal with its budget relative to the charter schools. What's left in there is very little room to work. Um, there was a thing, not in the last meeting, but the meeting before, uh, that was raised. It was an idea that some would argue could potentially uh, translate into uh, a higher cost. It was, uh, it was an idea to uh, address the state situation with caps on our superintendents. And I think one or more of the board members had an objection that I thought went to budget concerns. In that same meeting, however, there was a, uh, there was a vote for a, uh, a new handling related to substitute teachers uh, that I thought, if I understood it correctly, would result in substitute teachers who are closer to the community, who are more familiar with the kids, but it also translated into lower cost to the district. Uh, if I recall, that same board members voted against that, and I think their reasons may have been laudable, but I don't think it had to do with budget controls because it would have translated into higher costs. Um, at the end of the day, the board's responsibility is to the children of this district. Uh, and that is definitely something Mr. Murray mentioned that I agree with. What I don't agree with is, is uh, the sort of blanket assessment that nothing is done, that there are no solutions. There are plenty of things within the range of controls that are available, that are being done. But I think that the available room, the latitude inside which things can be done to improve things for our children while still meeting all the requirements of the laws and dealing with a contract that has been an enormous weight on the shoulders of this district for years, uh, I think the amount of room in which to work has gotten smaller and smaller. And I'm very happy for the parents and the children of Ola that they got their extension, but anybody who thinks that that does not have a negative impact on the, the public school district children uh, is wrong. And, and I think one thing can be true and the other thing can be true also. There are no, this isn't a binary situation. So I look forward to reading in detail uh, what's offered here and discussing in more detail my thoughts on the budget at the next meeting. And thank you for your good work. Thank you. Any more speakers? Uh, Mr. Enrico. Again, I made a promise to myself driving in that I wouldn't speak, but I just can't let some of these things go. I really can't. Leon, Teresa, the people I negotiated with, and I say it today, and I said it this afternoon to Dr. Toback, we are willing to work with the Board of Education, okay? I don't know, were you referring to the, con when you said contract, you meant the teacher's contract? Just for clarification. Oh, okay, Mr. Enrico. No, no, I just want no, to get clarify something. And the, the hourly rate, I mean, I don't know, like if you call a plumber to your house and a guy charges you $350, 
you know, I guess that's okay, but if you're a professional that you went to school, you went and got your master's, and we charge the Board of Ed $37 to work after school, I don't think that's a lot of money. I really don't. We are willing to work with the Board of Education to try to come to some type of an agreement. All right, well, our contract is up. We understand the process. And I, I don't know anyone that has been involved with me. I think I'm a pretty reasonable person. I love the district because I went here and I've been here for 38 years. I didn't leave, uh, I left, I mean, I stayed working here because I love Hoboken. So to insinuate that the teachers are trying, no, we're gonna work with you. Be reasonable and we're gonna work together. But as, as far as things I've said, I stick by what I've said. I'm gonna stand by it. But, you know, eight or nine million dollars coming out of the district's funds. There's no way the Board of Education could operate. And I've sat on a Board of Education. And when people come up here and they say, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. How come you don't do that? When you get elected and you're sitting there, you finally realize there's a lot, a lot of things you could do. Because most of the stuff is already established. There's not a lot of things you could do. I sat on the parameters for nine years. People, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? A lot of stuff that's fixed costs, you can't really do anything about it. So when people come up and they criticize you, I can understand what they're saying, but there's, like, you know, there's really not too much you can do. We are always willing to work with the Board of Education and with the superintendent, okay? And I anticipate that going forward. Let's try to sit down, let's see what we can do. We are not looking to make, you know, we're never gonna make a lot of money in teaching. You know what I mean? I'm teaching 38 years, I make $100,000 after 38 years. What would I make in the real world if I was a, uh, as people say, the real world? What would I get for 38 years of service to a company? I think I get more than 100,000. And I think the people who start out in the district should start higher than what they're starting with. You want professionals, people who've gone to school for four, five, six years. Should they start at 48,000? I don't know, that's a decision that you have to make. I'm not gonna rehash things that happened in the past. I'm on record, I'm on all these, you know, Facebook arguing with people. Their minds are already made up. But I'll, I'll just end on this. If we cut of $9 million, we take four, Point five million dollars, put it back in our system, everybody comes back to the public schools, right? We'll have, we can hire all the teachers we need and we can give $5 million, $5 million back to the taxpayers of Hoboken, all right? And we'll have a great system, all right? So I look forward to working with the board and uh, we'll come to some type of agreement, I'm sure. Thank you. Any other speakers? No. Um, any other? Yes, please. Um, I just think since we're having a budget conversation, I, I hear this, I think it might be useful in, in people with their questions when they hear the term uh, cost per student, because I, I hear that a lot and that's a, a question that comes up and I think one of them that I've heard lately is uh, $28,000 per student. And uh, personally, I don't think that that number is correct, but I also just wanted to point out to people that it's an average, right? It's an average. So if we have a thousand students and every child has a different educational need. You might have some kindergarten students, middle school students cost more, high school students cost more than that. Then you have some other students that require services, OT, PT. Uh, you know, John Hopkins is, adds a lot per student, you know, and, and then so you take, and then we have some students that are uh, 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 taken to other schools for, you know, maybe up to $150,000 per student. So you have lots of children on the high end, some, some ones, and, and so it's an average. So I think when people compare this cost per student, I think it's a little bit disingenuous because they know it's an average, and I, I think it's incorrect. So, um, and then you talk about the, the, the economies of scale. So if you had a few hundred, uh, a couple, let's say 10 fifth uh, kindergarten students coming in, if you were to bring them into 10 existing classes, they wouldn't cost you probably anything at all. You know, a couple of books, some pencils. But if you had some other kids coming in in a different class that required a teacher, so it, it's different. It's an average of, we have a much a bigger, width of, of students that we serve. And then I also just wanted to um, just think about when uh, people say that nothing has gone on. And I look at this chart, and, and I, I think if you look back over the years from 2010, just even the past four or five years, right? So the charter school allocation has doubled. The state aid was removed from us and never given back. Federal aid was down. They've 
increased choices for other local districts in the community, but decreased our right to choice. So that took another $250,000 out of our system. So we've incurred a lot of these cuts kind of hampering our ability to have these different revenue sources. Um, yet, and still, we absorbed all those cuts. The taxes didn't go up, and we still were able to offer um, increased programming, increased um, G&T, increased uh, facilities programs. So I want people to understand that I don't subscribe to the fact that nothing happened. And I think a, lot, a great deal has happened for a very good price. And, and a lot of some of these things now have caught up to us where our ability to raise the funds are, are hampered now. And because I, I think the other part about that confusion with the cost per student that people like to say, if you see that the enrollment, let's say, goes up 93%, I think there's a, a kind of a, an idea in the community that 93 times, oh, 28,000. And that's not true. It's not like some kind of tuition price. It's just absorbed through the economies of scale. You know, if a, if a child moves in or out, it's not $28,000. So I just wanted to bring that up. Um, I think that was it. Okay, Peter? So I wanted to clear some of those things up. Peter. Oh, I had nothing to say. You had nothing to say? Okay, anybody else? Please, Ruthie. Um, just a, a few. First of all, um, it always, uh, the, your biggest line item is always personnel. So uh, as we entered into this budget cycle and we knew that it was going to be tight, uh, most of us knew what it was going to mean. And for those, uh, Mr. Enrico, and for the teachers that are going to watch this, and real and school employees that are going to watch this, I just hope that the next couple of weeks aren't too rough because a lot of people are going to be worried and a lot of people are scared. And I think that, you know, I was always raised that, uh, you know, you temper your your attitude and your demeanor to the appropriate for the occasion, and quite frankly, that means you're not gleeful at a funeral. And when there's a situation where people's jobs are on the line, people that have skill sets that really don't meet a wide variety of uh, career choices, that uh, sarcasm and insipidness is an inappropriate way to discuss any item. So with that, I'd like to also mention what actually has happened in this district over the last five years. I was elected in April of 2009. Prior to April of 2009 was a huge, and the whole reason why I ran was because of the whole to do about spending a tremendous amount of money on a new program. And the first thing I did in April of 2009, uh, other board members, uh, that are no longer on the board are here is we had to approve layoffs. So we actually had a board of education that was in place and a superintendent in place that was talking about an expenditure of $750,000 on a program that didn't even happen when they knew full well that there was gonna be a list of layoffs. There were also 525 employees at that time in the district. Now there's 400 and 400 employees. And you know, those weren't teachers between uh, that 525 number to here, but the list of teachers that was the list of layoffs that were put before us in April 2009 were all teachers. And we spent the next year and a half, uh, whatever it was, laying off non classroom personnel that were unnecessary. That's what was here before 2009. That was what was going on in this district in April 2009. And no disrespect for any teachers that worked on the curriculum project before 2009, because as a business person, I know that the leadership on the project is what determines the quality of the work. And the Hoboken curriculum project that we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on prior to April in 2009 was unusable when we had a certified person in here reviewing the curriculum. And we have spent the last 10, 11, 12, 13, we pretty much finished up the main works, rewriting work that was done. And once again, absolutely should not be a discredit to the teachers that were working on the original project because the leadership is what determines whether or not what is created is, is usable. So this was the kind of thing that we walked in on. This is April of 2009. 
Also, too, I have had a child in this district before 2009 and until the present, not just this school year. And anyone who's come into this school year has had the advantage of practically new textbooks all throughout, new curriculum all throughout. What was here when my child came in kindergarten were hardworking teachers working in silos without strong administration behind them because their administration couldn't do what they needed to do because they were told what to do. So you had teachers working hard without materials and without and, and doing the best job they could. And is your kid okay? But I'm telling you. What we've given and what's been built in this district since 2009 is amazing. And what I get is teachers thanking me now, thanking me for the supplies, m happy because they've learned what it means to have a good administration, that they have mentors in place to help them, and that's what's changed. And to come up with so little experience in district and talk that nothing is being done is, is shameful. And to me, why anyone who has been speaking like that about this district, why they would move their child into this district, it just doesn't make any sense. So just like I said last meeting, it makes me suspect. Just like I was suspect of uh, Ms. Rose Kern's reasons for the other explosion I had, if this counts as an explosion, it was the same level of uh, angst. Um, that it does make me suspect. But what I do know is that we, this is a tough budget. There's not a lot of room. We talk about the decrease to tuition. People should understand. That's because those programs, those seats are being filled by Hoboken students. So we can't bring in, which are income generating students into that program. School choice. We have choice all over this district, but Christie changed the way school choice worked. It doesn't work just like charter school choice works, where if a child moves and goes to another town, or if they bring a child in from another town, that the money comes from the town. Christie changed it, so it comes from the state. So we don't get the same advantage where we could just be going along collecting from other towns. Like, so there's this just, there's so many things that are causing us to have trouble with this budget but the one thing we've done this year is we've saved, oh, I'm sorry, okay. thank you. So just in summation though, I did want to say that from the meetings that we've had this week about the budget, I want to assure the parents in the district, including you, that this budget has been designed to have minimal impact this year on the classroom. So um, parents should be reassured that we are still going to ha have a, that, that education will still be of the quality that we've, that we've built it to over the last couple of years. And just to end things on a little uh, better note, we did have an open house and the public should know how well received our high school is to the public, not just from uh, candidates within our schools, but also from the charter schools and the private schools that have come to visit the high school, and they did a really superb job in uh, presenting. So, thank you. Are there going to make, going to make a motion to close the meeting? Uh, motion. Second. Yes? No? Yeah. Yes. Okay.